Welcome to what is going to be a short tutorial on uh, setting up a sequence within Omnisphere, which those of you who've listened to my music will have heard quite very predominantly is drives the track from beginning to end. A um, few people ask me how do I create these sequences? Well, the trick is Omnisphere, a uh, very versatile synth. So without further ado, we'll get straight into it. So bring up Omnisphere. Um, start afresh, make sure there's nothing there, we'll clear the multi. Uh, we first need to set up um, the sounds to start with. Uh, so let's uh, let's start with uh, synth sound. Uh, need something that's quite deep. Uh, solid German. That's, that's a nice solid bass to build from. Uh, and I always like using the Rich and Moogie 3 filter for this. That's a bit of that Moog filter sound. And then we, we'll have a second layer. Uh, we'll make this one a sample. Um, we need something that's Moogie in nature. Let's have a look. Moogie. There we go. Uh, Juno 60 Moogie. That should give us a nice. Now, there's a new filters uh, that came with Omnisphere 2.5. Uh, one of these is a colourful Resol Sphere. A uh, Resol Spacer, sorry. It has like a vowel quality to it, which is nice when you. Layer it up like that. So I'll just tweak the cuts off slightly. Put resonance on there. And the next trick is to go into the arpeggiator. Now this is where the fun begins. First of all, we'll clear the standard arpeggiator patch, make it blank to start with. Now what I tend to do is have it a 16 step sequence. And you alter the steps by just clicking on that little uh, highlighted bit at the bottom there and dragging it out. So we drag those to 16. And then from there uh, we have a look at interspersing each step. So each one of these is a, is a step. So you just basically click on them to make them active. So we'll look at this and uh, let's get a nice rhythm sort of every other one. Uh, uh, yeah, let's do every other one. Um, we'll make those two together. It's fairly random, to be honest. Uh, there's no real trick to uh, getting a starting block, really. Just pick the steps and, and we get a nice rhythm on the page. Now we need to get some notes thrown into there. So. First of all, decide on what scale you're going to uh, compose in. Is it going to be minor or is it going to be major? Because that will alter how you're going to program these steps. Because above each little step here is you'll see a number naught. If you click on that naught, you can choose any step from naught to plus 24, minus 24. So it's basically up two octaves or down two octaves. Each number represents a semitone. So that's why you need to know whether you're going to write in minor or major. A lot of electronic music is, well, the stuff I, I make, the style that I do, the ambient electronic stuff is in a minor key. Uh, and we'll go with the natural minor scale, so we'll choose C minor to start with. And the, key, the notes in that are C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So our first note will always be the root, so that will be our C note. Now, the next note I will tend to go above the octaves to start with, just to give that a nice leap. So 15, um, that will give you an E flat, so an octave above the C. Uh, and then is a C, of course, naturally, and then you go up another couple of steps, and that's an E flat. Um, 
and we'll come down to a C. Uh, we'll go back up again. Uh, then we'll come down a semitone. So that'll take us to the D. Um, then if we bring it down to 10, that'll give us a B flat. So 10 semitones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, don't, don't start from the C like I did. Start from the C sharp, that's number one. So, note one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be flat. So, uh, we then go back up an octave, go back to the flat, and finish. Always finish on the tonic because then it needs nicely back to the, to the start, otherwise, it can sound a bit jarring if you don't. And then play in the bottom octave of the keyboard. That sounds a little bit too high. So what we'll do, we'll drop that one. Oops, I went up, up an octave, down an octave. There we go. to do to get that wonderful sort of like note doubling effect and we need to add a little bit of delay on so I'll have uh, a little bit of delay we won't go too mad because otherwise it just swamps the whole sound so I'll go there and we'll take the reverb back a bit there we go and then we get still a bit too much trick here to save it is bounding along like it is doing there and sort of like getting into your head too much we'll go to an eighth note and it adds a little bit something C and the C above it, so holding a whole octave down. tutorial um, you find helpful I've actually written this down in words as well on uh, my website www.biodiode.com links down below in the description um, if you enjoyed the video give it a like and uh, subscribe and I shall be back with another tip um, in the next week or so so to finish off the first video this is one of the um, sequences that I composed, um, Nick, Nick called it Blippi Mook. Understand why when you hear it. Now, 
Now this is uh, made up from the solid German. A li little fatty electro girl. The filter presets. Um, the pre standard. I've not really done anything with it. But I won't change the cut off. Um, and if you look at the modulation, modulation is the LFL1. Motors, uh, that modulates the filter envelope depth. The wheel changes the cut off. Sequences too. 